So picture this, it's about five months ago and the school year is ending. I'm sitting at my lunch table with some friends and we're talking about some music we're listening to. Now I'm over here with some Tame Impala, a little bit of Grateful Dead, such a calm trues in there. And of course there's a bit of a motley group at the table, there's a few black people, a few white people, Filipino. It's a good mix. But the black people at the table, see, they're calling me a cornball for the music that I'm listening to. And so I ask him, what do you listen to? And the one guy says to me, I be bumping Lil Pump, XXS Tentacion, Ski Master Slum God. Wait, wait, who? Bro, I know you heard a Lil Pump before. No, I'm white. You ain't heard my dog XXX Tentacion? No, I'm white. Nigga, you a cornball. Let me play some. Hey, I like bitch with your mess. Hey, can't keep my dick in my pants. Hey, my bitch don't love me no more. Hey, she kick me out on life, bro. Hey, that bitch don't wanna be friends. Hey, I give her this, she I'm mad. Hey, she put her ten on my dick. Hey, look at my wrist. Man, this sucks. Nah, that shit dummy slaps. But it didn't slap. Or at least, it didn't slap yet. A month or so later, I found my sister listening to the guy, and I gave his music another shot. She'd been playing Jocelyn Flores, and at first I didn't even think this was the same rapper that had been played for me before. The song had coherent lyrics, with intention behind them, and music theory behind the beat. I read the lyrics of the song after I'd listened to it, and found out that it was practically a poem dedicated to a girl that X knew who killed herself. This wasn't rap as I knew it, but I wanted more. And so I listened to the album that the song was on, 17, in just under an hour thereafter. And it was probably both the best and the worst introduction to him that I could have had. Because on one hand, you had what he claimed to be his most powerful intended set of songs to date. But on the other hand, you had a set of songs that really didn't connect with the rest of his discography. It was strange. Hearing those lyrics in those songs created an image of him, to me, that I didn't find in any other rapper that I'd ever listened to. Clicking from related video to related video, even listening to such powerful lyrics as, yeah, they call me young dagger dick, that's my handle, yeah, and bitch, I cut off the leash, I do not want your yeast, peace to the Middle East, I want your Reese's peace. The image of X in my mind, despite the more ghetto sounding material that he produced, still remained distance from everyday rap. To me, he wasn't identical to the contemporary rappers of the Miami music scene from which he gained his following, like Lil Pump and Smoke Perp. All three of them do share stylistic tendencies unique to the Miami rap subculture, a lot of which come from the earlier Raider clan and their founder Space Ghost Perp, one of the pioneers of distorted sound effects in rap. You hear these most notably in his song The Black God, where a distorted bass underscores his lyrics about coming to prominence in the rap game. Mystical, magic colors, my brothers on MTV. The black beat, the power of the soul, protected by the cold. X times X, the G code, and God mode. As I try to expose the robotic hype beast up in the same clothes. You hear the same in Lil Pump's Gucci Yang and in Smoke Perp's Audi, and of course in XXX Tentacion's Look at Me. Hey, I like bitch who is your mess. Hey, can't keep my dick in my pants. Hey, my bitch don't love me no more. Hey, she kicked me out on life, bro. Hey, that bitch don't wanna be friends. Hey, I give her a dish, she I'm mad. But then, when you listen to something like Young Bratz, the similarities really begin to fade away, and X as an individual artist comes forward. The first thing that really got to me was his anger. Lyrics like, I like to rock out like I'm misfit, my emo bitch like her wrist slit, and king of the dead, I sever your head, when shit touch the river, my rain will be fed. Don't speak to a simplistic man content with his life, in the same way Gucci gang, 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 spend three racks on a new chain, yeah, do. And the thing is, there's a really good reason for that. X has lived an extremely difficult life. Murders and rapes and suicides have plagued him since he was a child. It's no mistake that when he was younger, he broke a kid's mouth for making fun of his mom and nearly strangled a homosexual to death for looking at him the wrong way when he was imprisoned. Yeah. So I go in the corner and I start beating his face and like I like I grabbed his face and like I put it on the corner type shit and I threw his head on the corner and I just started stumping and like his drawing type shit. And then as soon as I did that, like I remember like I just put his head on the corner and I started stumping on him. So I start strangling, like I'm strangling him, like, and he's like leaking, leaking, leaking type shit. And I'm strangling him so he doesn't scream. So I'm strangling him. Yeah. Like I, I, I smear his blood on my face, on my hands. X is a very angry person, a very disjointed person. And more than anything, the musicality of his rap reflects that because it's genuine to him. That's why sometimes the underground like rawness of the track like, makes the, the track makes genuine. The track. It's a personal thing because my ears, like my ears, 
I want it to fit my ears because mm-hmm. I know if it's, bro, if it sounds crazy to me, it's gonna sound crazy to everybody else. Mm-hmm. When it sounded crazy to us, I knew for a fact to other people that would just hear it, it would sound absolutely fucking insane. And mm-hmm. I was always, always right with that. That distorted bass is a personal choice that reflects him and the way he wants the music to sound. Finding that out really changed the way I understood his music. That the bass isn't just distorted for the sake of adhering to the style of his contemporaries, but manifesting his own mind in the music that he's creating. Even in his more vapid music, that anger that I saw became not one of a shallow aesthetic, but of a clearly defined reflection of X's mind. And the thing is, he doesn't just leave his mind to the screaming. His mind is the whole of his music. That's probably why you get shit like, Eat my ass. Yo. Because his mind isn't always the most put together. But at the same time, you see currents of his life running throughout every song he's ever made. In his harder music, whether the lyrics are meaningful or not, it is in the screaming, but not entirely. Anyone can clearly tell that that screaming of the lyrics draws some inspiration from heavy metal, or at least pop metal music, which X actually mentioned as stylistically formative in the creation of his own genre. But there's more metal to his music than many would think. He's actually no stranger to sampling from bands like Slipknot or excerpts from the works of Marilyn Manson, but the actual music, not the rap over top, that X has originally produced, also draws so much from metal that it's actually kind of surprising. The most prevalent music device he uses is what's called chromaticism, which is the same thing you hear in that signature circus music. It's kind of eerie, but also kind of inviting, and X makes clear use of it in the song Gnarly Bastard. That beginning ascent you hear, kind of like a winding sound, is a chromatic ascent starting on the F sharp, until you finally get into the main riff that's used throughout the song. A lot of his basses also make use of this chromaticism as well, the beat not staying on one particular note, but rising and falling by one chromatic interval each time it's hit. For reference, Metallica is just one of many metal bands that makes use of the chromatic scale, especially in their songs Master of Puppets and For Whom the Bell Tolls. What's more, X also makes use of what's referred to as the harmonic minor scale in a lot of his music too, giving it that dissonant and eerie sound that Gnarly Bastard and King of the Dead are known for. Again, you find the harmonic minor throughout metal music because of the similar dark tone that metal tries to evoke. Stylistic choices like these pervade X's music, even in those songs that aren't specifically influenced by metal. The clearest example of this is his song Slipknot, where a piano actually runs down the entirety of the A-flat harmonic minor scale. The pervasive nature of the metal influence in X's music is also demonstrated in I Spoke to the Devil in Miami, He Said Everything Would Be Fine, and actually in Look at Me, where twice he uses a riff that's almost identical to that used in Last Resort by Papa Roach. You probably can't hear it exactly, so let me slow things down for you. Here's the riff from Last Resort. Now here's the riff from Look At Me.
And here's the riff from I Spoke to the Devil in Miami. The use of the F sharp, the G, the C, and the B in both riffs to evoke a dissonance throughout the song, and the fact that the order of the notes is somewhat identical, speaks incredibly to X's deep appreciation for the artists he listens to. The fact that he incorporates a similar riff into I Spoke to the Devil may be misconstrued as lazy music writing, but there's so much meaning behind it that it might actually make you rethink the way the song is organized. What's created in this riff between the F sharp and the C is what's known as a tritone, the most dissonant sound in Western music, often called the devil in music because of such a characterization. The way it dissonantly rings out against the main melody of the song reminds us of dissonance against the consonant harmony, almost as if the devil himself is in the music. It is the unstable nature of the tritone that makes it so expressly dissonant. And who is saying everything will be fine in the song? Who is saying that X will have stability in his life, but the king of instability himself? The devil. Little meanings like that are why I've just come to adore X as an artist. There's a power in what he writes and in what he produces, and he knows this. What is real will prosper. Mm -hmm. What you feel in the night, what you feel in the morning, what you feel midday, that you don't think, other people have the same thoughts. You feel alone in this thought, but other people have the same thoughts. And it breeds, and when you, when you display this thought, it breeds a certain amount of comfort mm -hmm. within people. Right. And people start to feel like, all right, this person understands me, this person is fucking cool. I Spoke to the Devil is one of the best examples of X's meaning within the music he writes, as it's completely filled with religious symbolism. The distinction between the wolf, the doer of evil, and the shepherd, the doer of good, alludes to Christ as the good shepherd and Satan as the wolf, Satan ultimately more successful than Christ, at least according to X's perception. References to both the Apple of Genesis and the selling of X's soul to a Baphomet, a legendary medieval demon, and the Latin phrase anima vestra are all clear allusions to Roman Christianity, and particularly X's disenfranchisement with its inability to give him a sense of meaning and happiness, because, well, he's trapped in a changing maze, setting his soul ablaze, couldn't control the pace. Where is this going? For many, this may seem like a one-off song full of emoisms and esoteric references, but Religion for X is a motif that appears in a surprising amount of his songs. He actually offers a rejoinder to his thoughts within the song Valentine when he speaks directly to the saint and asks him to make an intercession to God on his behalf, making reference to the popular 20th century prayer, Now I lay me down to sleep, in the process. And while X is unsure whether to follow Satan or Christ, he remarks that he's numb to the pain of life, another recurrent theme throughout his music appearing in everything from snow to everybody dies in their nightmares. You also see it used in Jocelyn Flores, and of course, in the explanation track to the entire album that both songs are in. As he says himself, Here is my pain and thoughts put into words. I put my all into this in hopes that it will help cure or at least numb your depression. Numbness and the related depression that X claims to experience abound in Seventeen, as do a lot of references to the struggles and turmoils he's incurred throughout his life. And, as he says in that same explanation, it's absolutely with purpose. Seventeen. A collection of nightmares, thoughts, and real-life situations I've lived. By listening to this album, you are literally, and I cannot stress this enough, literally entering my mind. And if you are not willing to accept my emotion, and hear my words fully. Do not listen. And taken in conjunction with the theory and influence behind X's other music, you absolutely get a clear sense that he means what he means in this music. The writer Charles Hanel wrote over a hundred years ago that there is a world within, a world of thought and feeling and power, of light and life and beauty, and though invisible, its forces are mighty. And when you listen to X, when you read his lyrics, and when you understand the way he has composed his songs, you enter into that world. It's one of ongoing pain, of numbness, of confusion, and of depression. It's one of an ongoing cultural synthesis between African and Caucasian culture, bringing hip-hop to metal to create an entirely new sound in the process. The problem that many have with X is that the controversy that surrounds his life, rife with crime allegations, murder attempts, and surprisingly odd Instagram videos, seems to disavow all the deeper meaning that you can find in him. But all of this only further brings that internal world to us. And of course, while it's in a more raw and admittedly low-class manner, 
It performs unto us, X's audience, the very same end that his music aims to, to find X's mind and to become one with his world. And in bringing that world to us, he's made that possible. This is Mr. Amazing. Thanks for watching. Hey, my boy worked hard on this video, and if you want to go compensate him for the free entertainment, then go throw him a buck or something on Patreon. Even read me at X's handwriting too, so if you want to use that join as a font, then go cop that too. And if you want to go chop it up with my dog personally, then go join his Discord. It's been real, it's been fun, but I can't say it's been real fun.